I cannot stop knitting. My skeins turn into mittens, cardigans, socks, and I knit stitch after stitch, row after row on my needles. With a rhythm like the waves and the beating of the heart, my yarn runs through my fingers day and night and in between all the things that are called life. Just one more row and one more, and one more. The soft and peaceful rhythm of the knitting provides opportunities for thoughts, feelings, discussions about life in general and knitting in particular. A warm welcome to Sophia's Tales podcast. My name is Sophia Karlsson and I live in Sweden. So most of this podcast is in Swedish, but you can always find English subtitles in the settings. Jag kan inte sluta sticka. Mina nystan blir till vantar, koftor, sockor. Och jag matar fram maska efter maska, varv efter varv på mina stickor. Med en rytm som liknar vågorna och hjärtats slag. Löper ulltrådarna mellan mina fingrar, natt och dag och mellan allt annat som kallas livet. Bara ett varv till och ett till. Stickningens mjuka, taktfasta och rofyllda rytm ger upphov till tankar, känslor och samtal om livet i allmänhet och stickning i synnerhet. Jag heter Sofia Karlsson och jag önskar dig varmt välkommen till Sofias Tales podcast. Hjärtligt välkommen till ett alldeles nytt avsnitt av Sofias Tales podcast. Det var över ett år sedan jag släppte ett avsnitt sist. Så nu är det ju äntligen dags. Jag har så sett fram emot det här och jag är så glad att du tittar in. Jag hoppas att du ska tycka om dagens avsnitt som är ett fullspäckat avsnitt med ett samtal mellan mig och en vän. Det kommer att handla om livet i allmänhet och stickning i synnerhet. Du kommer också få veta lite varför det har tagit så lång tid för mig att komma ut med ett nytt avsnitt. Men var så säker, nu kommer det att komma fler avsnitt här. Hösten är ju den härligaste sticktiden tycker jag på året. När man verkligen längtar efter ull och stickning och varma tekoppar och härliga stunder framför en brasa kanske. Och... Lite bad i havet som jag tycker är ännu skönare på hösten än på sommaren. Just nu sitter jag här på en klippa och stickar på någonting ganska hemligt. Men det syns ju inte riktigt vad det är så här. Så att du kommer få veta varför det är hemligt senare i avsnittet. Jag är glad att du har tittat in och häng med på ett alldeles nytt avsnitt. Det känns så fint att vara igång med podden igen. Det har gått ganska lång tid sedan jag sist släppte ett avsnitt. Men nu är jag tillbaka och ser fram emot att dela med mig av min stickning, mina tankar och mina naturupplevelser. Av livsglädje och kreativitet. I det här avsnittet kommer du att få möta några av mina stickande vänner. Det kommer att få höra om stickning såklart. Om naturens helande kraft, pilgrimsvandring. Om vänskap och om mödrar och döttrar som har stickningen gemensamt. Jag vill rikta ett innerligt tack till alla er som har hört av er med varma hälsningar. Och till alla er som fortsatt vara patrons och stötta mitt arbete. 
trots att jag under en lång tid inte har producerat så mycket material som jag skulle ha velat. Livet har liksom kommit emellan. Jag har gått igenom så mycket som jag inte vill dela offentligt. Och samtidigt har jag behövt försörja mig, vilket har varit möjligt genom mina mönster, mina patrons och annonsörer. Det är en viktig balans mellan att vara personlig och inspirerande å ena sidan och att behålla sitt privatliv å andra sidan. För mig är det viktigt att vara genuin och att den här podden handlar om sånt som jag tycker är relevant att dela med mig av. Men när man är utsatt för extrema prövningar bakom scenen kan det vara svårt att liksom gå upp leende på scenen. Och jag har gett mig den på att dela det vackra och ljusa i livet eftersom det är det som jag tycker inspirerar. Och det är också där som man kan finna kraften att orka med prövningarna, mörkret och det som är svårt. Jag vill aldrig hamna i bitterhet för jag tänker att det är som att dricka gift. Och därför väljer jag alltid nådens och kärlekens väg. Och jag önskar så innerligt att alla ska få må bra och finna sin balans och sin mening på livets väg. Det har hänt så fantastiskt mycket fint i mitt liv sista tiden. Efter många svåra år fyllda av prövningar fann jag styrka och glädje genom att välja kärlek framför rädsla. Och tacksamhet framför bitterhet. Varje dag. Det var ett aktivt val. Det är ett aktivt val. Och under de här åren pilgrimsvandrade jag också på Sankt Olavsleden från Sveriges östkust till Norges västkust. Steg efter steg mot Nidarosdomen. På långa vindlande vägar där det fanns tid för tankar att falla på plats och utvecklas. Jag tror... Att de långa vägarna jag vandrade fram på är sammanlänkade med stigar i hjärtat. Läkande stigar som öppnar upp för en kontakt med skapelsen såväl som för nya äventyr. Stigar som stärker, som hjälper till att kalibrera livskompassen. Att vara en pilgrim är verkligen såväl en inre som en yttre resa. Genom min pilgrimsvandring hände saker med mitt hjärta och då menar jag inte bara fysiskt utan främst känslomässigt och andligt. Det är väldigt fint att få känna sig som en liten ödmjuk del av den stora skapelsen och att känna att jag är buren älskad och omsluten av Gud. Jag har växt som kvinna, som mamma, som pilgrim. Sanningen Gör oss fria. Det är så vackert. Sen när jag mådde som allra bäst på egen hand så mötte jag den vackraste själ som också valt samma väg som jag. Min Håkan. Allt föll på plats och nu har vi flyttat ihop och gift oss och allt är rätt och lätt och fint. Men när allting äntligen kändes bra och tryggt då saknades kraften att skapa annat än det vi behövde i våra liv, i vår vardag. Det är underbart, men det tar tid att flytta och att gifta sig. Det har varit nödvändigt att dra mig lite tillbaka för att fokusera på mitt liv under den här viktiga ombyggnadsfasen. Och att inse och bearbeta vad som hände innan livet kändes tryggt. Jag är så stolt och tacksam att jag har valt den väg jag har valt och att jag orkade arbeta mig igenom hela den tiden. Det var ett djupt stup jag tog mig över och nu är jag äntligen på andra sidan och har återfått både kraft och lust att arbeta mer med mina kreativa projekt. Livet innehåller ju både ljus och mörker. Det går upp ibland och det går ner ibland. Jag är tacksam att vara här där jag är just nu. Tack för att du tittar in här. A warm welcome to my uh, kitchen and uh, my kitchen sofa where I love to uh, knit and crochet and spend time with friends. 
Uh, I'm so very grateful for all my uh, dear friends that I have uh, and many of my closest friends come from the knitting community. I've uh, gotten to know them through um, my knitting and through the wool and threads that bind us all together. And last week I got married and it was uh, a very happy occasion and I'm so glad to have spent this day uh, not only with my um, wonderful husband and my kids and his kids but also with uh, our dear friends and many of my knitting friends came for this wonderful occasion from different countries around the world like Sarah Fibertrek is one of my uh, dear girlfriends. She came from Maine in the United States and she mm. arrived a week before the wedding. So we had uh, lots of time for preparations for the party and also time to spend on our own knitting and chatting and um, uh, catching up since last time we uh, uh, had a week together. Uh, so Sarah helped me with my wedding dress. I had made it myself in a light blue, ice blue uh, silk fabric. And um, I just wasn't done when she came a week before the wedding. So she helped me with the hemline and she did that by hand, which I felt was so uh, wonderful. Not only I needed the help because I wasn't done, but also uh, it was a lovely gift that one of my uh, close girlfriends uh, helped me with the dress. So she, her uh, effort, her work yeah. and, and the work of her hands uh, are in my dress and part of part of that. So I'm grateful for that. And then also for the wedding, Britt Arnhild, uh, a knitting friend, a dear knitting friend from Norway, from Trondheim came. Britt Arnhild and I spent uh, a week together in... Um, Tuscany in June uh, where we hosted a knitting retreat that was uh, also a wonderful uh, thing uh, that I will show you pictures from later and then Nina came um, a crafter's tail who lives here in Sweden uh, we have also had so much uh, lovely time together and uh, Charlotte from Switzerland uh, Charlotte who is stone knits on uh, Instagram and um, she also spent a couple of days here and then of course Andrea uh, and Madeline and I'm so glad to have Madeline with me here today. Andrea and I um, became friends many years ago through the knitting and we have spent time together in both in Edinburgh in Scotland uh, in, and in Sweden uh, two years ago and um, also in Germany last winter. Uh, I spent a week with Andrea and Madeline, who are producing the podcast Fruity Knitting. Yeah. And we uh, spent a lot of time together, both working and having a great time. And I finally got to know you, Madeline. A warm yeah. welcome to yeah. you. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here with me in I'm my kitchen. I'm honored to be on your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Thank you. It's so nice <laughs> to have you here. Yeah. And um, I, as I said, I've known Andrea for many years and spent a lot of time with her, both in the so-called reality and as you said on the phone on the phone yeah <laughs> so i've uh, you've seen me uh, when we have been facetiming many times <laughs> <laughs> long nights we have spent together sharing both uh, uh, happiness joy and sorrow and uh, mm. yeah so sharing life as you do with close friends and yeah. so in january i met you finally and we had some lovely time together yeah and now you're here Yes, mm -hmm. it's been wonderful to be in Sweden. This is my first time in Sweden. Um, and it started off with a beautiful wedding and I got to meet so many people, um, including Charlotte, who I met in person earlier this year because we interviewed her, and Sarah uh, from Fibertrack, who I met for the first time, um, and so many other friends and family. It's been really great. Yeah, and yeah. you've also been a, a great help. And you sang at our wedding. That yes. was a lovely gift. Yeah, wonderful, that, that amazing. <laughs> I uh, sang an Irish tune, but uh, with a coupled with a Christian text, because uh, I thought that would go nice to a wedding. And um, you like to think and talk about the Bible and, yes. and 
religion. So, uh, and I got to sing that accompanied by two of your friends who I met for the first time on the day of your wedding. Yes. <laughs> and they did such a good job of accompanying me. There was Eva on the violin and Jenny playing the piano. Yes. That was and really you had never met experience. before and I didn't know yeah. about this cooperation. It was my <laughs> youngest son who uh, kept everything together yeah. and he had helped you to get in contact with each other, yeah. sending notes and and uh, planning for this. So yeah. it was a really a precious surprise. I'm so happy for that. We both are very happy for that. Mm. And your mom, Andrea, she knitted me a shawl uh, that um, I could wear together with a dress mm. I had made uh, with uh, help from Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So Andrea made this beautiful shawl called the Hortense shawl. I don't remember the name of the designer now, do you? Oh, I'm, I, <laughs> I'll put I don't it in, either. <laughs> no, I'll put it in the uh, notes. So, uh, and Andrea also made a, a, a talk about this on your podcast, yes. on Fruit and Knitting, the yeah. last episode. Uh, sh so um, she has shared this and now you can see it here. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the name has a meaning as well. Yes. Hortense. Yes. Can you tell uh, me? Yeah, that? well, it's the gardener. Um, I think Hortense yes. means the gardener. And um, mum talked a bit also at your wedding about how the gardener is um, a symbol for marriage, <clears throat> or the gardener is the symbol for marriage, and the gardener has to look after it and tend to it lovingly for it to keep alive. And flourish. Yeah, and yeah. flourish, yeah. Yeah. So it has, has a beautiful symbolic meaning in many ways and I love the symbolic of uh, friends doing things for each other and I'm so <laughs> so yeah. grateful for this. Well you look beautiful in it. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we had planned together to, 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 to make it go with a light blue fabric in my dress. So. Yeah. Yes, uh, well uh, Ella and I, my daughter, she is uh, as you and your mother uh, run the Fruity Knitting podcast together, I run my podcast uh, mostly by myself and with a little help from different friends now and then. Mm -hmm. But my daughter is always in the background. She's not mm -hmm. very keen on being um, seen on, on the screen and uh, that's perfectly fine, I think. But I just... Um, Today, when I'm sitting here with my friend's daughter, <laughs> I, I, we are going to talk a little bit about mother-daughter relations and knitting. And uh, Ella started to knit as a child when she was like six, I think, and she knitted dolls and uh, uh, scarves and different things. And we also shared um, a lot of uh, creative projects. I have one with me here that I have shown before. It's a cover for a water bottle. And this, um, the the wool it's made from, was actually a sweater that I knitted for her father before uh, Ella was born, and he loved this sweater. He wore it many many years, and uh, until it was um, totally worn out, and I mended it, and it was uh, he couldn't use it anymore. So I. Um, what, I felted it. You felted it in the wash. Exactly. Yeah. Um, by uh, on purpose. <laughs> yeah. So I could use um, the fabric, mm -hmm. and I made this uh, cover for the for the hot water bottle, and I used buttons um, to close it from a, a pair of trousers that were bought secondhand and then used until uh, they fell apart as well. Exactly. <laughs> but the yeah. the buttons are very nice. Yeah. So I used them here. So this is a really lovely example of a recycling project uh, yeah. and then I that's the best detail in it my is, opinion isn't it what uh, is it it's Ella's drawing of a cat a cat we had at that time when she was I don't know how old she was maybe four or five and she um, drew this cat on a piece of paper and I transferred it um, to this and, and embroidered it on, yeah. on the water bottle. It's so cool. Yeah. It's actually, it does look like a cat. It's a little bit wonky. One ear is bigger yeah. than the other, but it's so charming. Yes. I love the idea. It's cute. Yeah. I love it. So it keeps um, keeps us warm, <laughs> whoever needs to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, one example of um, creativity uh, that I share with my daughter. And this was from when she was a child. Mm. And she had many years when she didn't knit much she crocheted um she she did a lot of crocheting uh but i think she had uh, troubles uh of uh, wanting to knit because she felt i was so good at it mm. and i didn't want her to feel um 
pressure. Pre- no, exactly. I mm. really wanted it to be a, um, a, a an act of joy to mm. knit. And finally, it became uh, joyous for her too. So I think she was like maybe 16 or 17 when she knitted her first... Um, real sweater, an Icelandic sweater, a riddari, yeah. and then no one could stop her. So since then she's been knitting um, as much as I do. She and caught the bug. She did. She <laughs> caught the bug. And you know a bit about that. We're going to talk about that in yeah. a little while, how you caught yeah. the knitting bug. Um, but there isn't a day, I think there isn't a day when Ella and I don't share some uh, thoughts on knitting uh, and now I actually ask her for advice sometimes and we uh, look for colors that go together and talk about patterns and she helps me a lot mm. behind the scenes so um, now I've been friends with your mom for many years and now it feels like you and I have a, a relationship of our own and you have also mm. met Ella and uh, yeah. so you can also share this joy for uh, handicraft yeah. th- together. Yeah. And how did it start for you, Madeline? Can you share a bit about your early knitting experiences? And Well, I think the very first thing I sort of knitted was, do you remember those sort of mushrooms where you'd oh, yes. twist the yarn around yeah. it and create some string? I think like that's the first an thing I cord. knitted. I don't know. Is that, does that count as knitting? Yes. Okay. So I knitted <laughs> fairly young, I suppose, maybe at six years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I made a scarf. But to be honest, as a child, for even as a teenager, for a long time, I didn't knit very regularly. Um, I think the first finished project I had was a scarf which I did wear a lot until it felted after I'd uh, gone hiking with it in Ireland or something where it's very wet (laughs) so I ruined it a little bit Um, and then when mum and dad started the podcast about eight years now ago um, I would knit occasionally also for the podcast and I was always excited about starting a new project but it wasn't really my passion So I mainly knitted if I was around mum and then she would sort of push me and also um, help me when with the difficult parts. Sometimes she just took over the more difficult parts. And uh, as I grew older, she started giving me, handing the knitting back to me when I came to her and said, I don't understand this. And she said, this is how you do it. Now do it yourself. (laughs) And um, yeah, so over time I started knitting more things, but I never really felt like a proper knitter because I always felt like I needed mum's help. I could never just read a pattern and say, okay, I can do that by myself. Um, until very recently, I'm embarrassed to admit. Um, and yeah, so I remember as a child, mum would knit a lot of jumpers for me and she made this one beautiful stripy jumper out of cotton, I think. Uh, which had pink, light blue and white stripes and I loved this jumper so much and I was very proud of it. This was when I was in primary school but I was a tomboy and I was constantly climbing over fences and climbing (laughs) up trees so I reckon this was the first day that I took it out to school I came back with this massive hole in it and I was so scared about getting into trouble. I think I did get into trouble (laughs) but mum came up with a beautiful solution of knitting and then sewing on this little patch to make it look like a pocket. It wasn't a pocket um, but it had a big M for Madeline embroidered on it or or I think she used Farrell and I loved it even more so it turned out the fact that I uh, got a hole in my favorite jumper was a good thing. That was um, a lovely solution also, yeah. a lovely way yeah. of um, mending and... Yeah, um, and it personalized it. I was even more proud of it. Um, but so back then, mum was always the one knitting for me. And then over time, I started knitting and, and we would sort of knit projects together. She would knit the more difficult parts. Then I started knitting things by myself. And fairly recently, I knitted a cabled hat for my mum, which I think is gorgeous. And I had a lot of pleasure knitting something for someone else. Um, And I think I want to do that more often. And I like how it's been the sort of cycle. It started off her knitting for me, and now I'm knitting for her occasionally. That's beautiful. I I also love this thing about how the knitting um, moves through the generations and how we can uh, learn from each other and some of us are lucky to have a a mother or a grandmother that can teach us I learned from my mother and grandmother and now I passed it on to my daughter and you also learned from your mother but you told me about your friend who had learned it in a different way well actually she learned knitting from me and I gave her some really bad advice (laughs) 
So um, she wanted to knit a scarf for her boyfriend. And I first of all, I tried to get her to follow a pattern, but she didn't want to. Uh, she said, just give me something super simple. So I said, all right, then just knit one row and then purl the next. But that's not a good solution for scarves because it ended up curling in on the edges. But she did manage to block it and I think it stayed fairly straight. But from now on, if I teach anyone, I'll say maybe knit one, purl one and create a sort of moss stitch or just yes. knit the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And now she uh, teaches herself crocheting, I think, just through the internet. So because handicraft sort of got out of fashion for a while it's nice that at least people can learn it over the internet and then they can be the people to teach others around yes. them to do so the there are many ways to to learn yeah uh, and it's such a joy when you have learned a new um, craft or mm. uh, skill because you uh, always carry it with you mm. it's a lovely gift to give to someone yeah uh, to teach knitting yeah. for example or yeah. sewing or um, crocheting mm. uh, and as I said before uh, me and my daughter we talk about knitting almost every day and share a lot of time together while knitting um, I know you do that with your mom as well and you yeah. also have it as your job with the podcast but um, could you tell us a bit how the knitting uh, affects your mother-daughter relationship mm. I mean beside from the podcast uh, well, the podcast is a major, major part of our lives. It's our full-time work. So um, sometimes it can be stressful. <laughs> There's a lot to do. But I love it when we do find the time to just sit down in the evenings or go to a cafe together and knit. Because we always feel like we're also being productive and we are doing something for our work. If yes. we decide, <laughs> okay, today I just want to go off to a cafe. Um, but it's such a nice time to relax and talk about anything that's going on in our lives how it, we're doing and yeah it's a lovely uh, thing to share yeah uh, I can see that yeah you and your mom as well as I can I'm so uh, grateful to have this with my daughter and yeah. other friends as well but uh, as a mother-daughter uh, in that relationship it's nice to have a common interest that you can share and something to get excited about together exactly yeah and it runs over all um, kind of uh, borders and uh, generations. And mm. also that um, now I'm friends with your mom, as I've been for many years, but also with you and you with Ella. And we, we can mm. um, um, spend time together in different constellations. That's, that's a lovely thing. Yeah. Would you like to share with us our, your latest project, the, the current project? Yes. Of course I would. So the current project uh, that I'm knitting is by Charlotte Stone from Stone Knits. It's the coffee socks and it's from this wonderful book called Charming Colorwork Socks. It has 25 different patterns in it and they're sort of categorized by different topics, uh, which I love the titles for. Yes. They include crafty animals, flower power, food glorious food the great outdoors and celebrate good times so i went for food glorious food because i love to eat and drink and uh, yeah coffee socks i chose because i have a passion for coffee as i talked in our latest episode on fruity knitting um and but now since i've gotten to know charlotte a bit better i always have to think of her when i see coffee because she drinks enormous amounts of coffee and <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's my association with it now. I also love coffee and yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, and um, w whenever I see mushrooms, I think of Charlotte. And I know. we saw some mushrooms when we were in the forest with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, um, this is another of her patterns that I have knitted, uh, one of my favorite socks. I really love this. It's yeah. uh, they call the magic toadstool socks, I think. Yeah. And I've knitted several of her sock patterns. She's one of my favorite designers and uh, a close friend. Yeah. So it's lovely to see you knitting her socks. And I think she was also really glad to see them when she was here. Yes. Um, and she's always taking photos of to toadstools and other mushrooms when we're walking around. Oh. Um, yeah. So this pattern, uh, I'm using the recommended yarn by Kikling Gecko called Socklandia Socks Yarn. It's 80% 80, 80 merino and 20% nylon. So you don't need to worry about um, it not being strong enough. Yeah, it's the same yarn she used for. Yes, the it's the socks. recommended yarn. Yeah, 
and uh, it is hand dyed so it always turns out very slightly differently and in my case the background colour was a little bit darker than the one that Charlotte used when she designed the socks so I did find that when I was knitting this part with a beautiful colour work that the dark chocolate brown coffee cups didn't stand out enough so I uh, went to Sophia and I said, Sophia, I don't know what to do. I'm not quite happy with it. And she gave me some of her leftover cream yarn, which is also a sock yarn. Yes. Um, and now I absolutely love the way it's turned out because you can really see the coffee beans at the top and the coffee cups. One more change that I made to the pattern was that I turned the, the steam um, a little bit more see-through, I suppose, by using the background color here instead of the dark chocolate. Um, yeah. So I'm really happy with how they've turned out. So far they seem to be fitting me. Originally I intended to do a swatch, but I didn't. Because <laughs> the swatch is basically yes. what I'd knitted up to yeah. here, and then I thought, I'll oh, just wing it. But you tried them on. I did had, try yeah. them on, yeah. Yes. And I hope that the, the yarn doesn't get looser. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, then it'll definitely fit me. They look really gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, wonderful and I also uh, feel like I want to knit a pair because mm. I as I said I also love um, a cup of coffee fika fika is the word you have learned here in Sweden yeah. yes it's it's Swedish for enjoying coffee or tea and something yummy to nibble on with some friends yes and having a cozy time it's a good word and it's hard to translate so yeah <laughs> it's a, a Scandinavian word or a Swedish I think um Yes, I thought we could also talk a bit about what we are wearing today. Mm. Would you like to uh, to tell us about the pattern on okay. your lovely cardigan? So I'll start then. This is the Audrey and Anst by Gudrun Johnston. And I knitted this, I think, when I was still in high school. So probably six years ago at least. Um, and I love this pattern. It's a beautiful cardigan with very simple lace for beginners. And it fits me very well. And also the yarn. Also a lovely mm. neckline. Yeah, it does have a lovely neckline. Uh, and uh, the yarn mum bought at the Ed Edinburgh Yarn Festival when she was there with you yes, as well. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> and I felt it was like an Andrea colour. But yeah. then you you had it and it she was also it a Madeleine colour. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I don't remember the yarn, unfortunately. Because Neither it's, do I. It's, it's a lovely yarn. Yeah, it's, it's really great. It's quite scratchy, but I love scratchy yarn. Um, and it doesn't peel at all. That's great, really great. So what are you wearing? Uh, I am wearing a, a traditional Norwegian pattern, uh, which is called Bøvertun in Norwegian. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a place in Norway, uh, the, the word Bøvertun. And it's actually the picture um, on the front page of the first Kofteboken, a Norwegian book about cardigans, traditional Norwegian cardigans. Mm. There are three Kofteboken, number They're one, two and three. Cupboard. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I have them, all three of them. And I've been wanting to knit this one since the first book came out, actually. Uh, but this was the right time. I wanted to knit myself a wedding cardigan to... Um, um, have us a memory from this lovely time together with um, uh, all our friends coming for our wedding. So mm. uh, I didn't use it in church because I had my <laughs> uh, silk dress and the uh, lovely uh, shawl from your mother. Uh, but I have been wearing it a lot during the time around the wedding. So I call mm. it my wedding cardigan as I knitted it for this uh, special occasion to yeah. carry all the lovely memories from this mm. uh, precious time. And uh, I have used uh, buttons that I bought in Norway, um, traditional Norwegian um, buttons, and also uh, this uh, button band that is uh, uh, bought in Norway. Uh, I used the same kind of button band on this cardigan. <laughs> Here it's um, seen on the inside. And also a traditional Norwegian uh, buttons for this cardigan. This one is called Signes Jacket, Signes Jacket, or Signes Cardigan, and I knitted this one last summer when we got engaged, me and Håkan, and we went to Trondheim. I was uh, finally uh, coming to Trondheim after my long pilgrimage that I have been on on my own for many years, and mm. then I came uh, to Trondheim together with him. It was uh, wonderful, and we also got engaged on that trip. And do the colors have any special symbolic meaning? Uh, to me, the blue colors are kind of connected to Trondheim, but I don't know if they are traditionally. But um, 
I, I used the red uh, as a detail because it looked good as a contrast. Uh, but of course, love, uh, love, <laughs> it's a color of love <laughs> uh, also. Uh, so uh, this was my engagement, engagement cardigan. And I um, learned that I really love to wear blue, especially mm. now as my hair has turned silver. <laughs> it yeah. looks good with blue. I've been wearing a lot of greens uh, earlier and I still love that. But uh, now I'm... Uh, I feel like I'm turning into more blue <laughs> so I, I chose blue for this wedding cardigan uh, as well so and that has a special detail to it at the bottom, oh yes it? <laughs> it has. Yeah. it's not finished yet uh, I'm, I'm wearing it a lot and I have uh, embroidered some details on it also and this cuff is oh uh, man, that's beautiful I've knitted the beads into this uh, and then I have embroidered some details on it mm. as well but I haven't f finished it <laughs> because yeah. I've had so much else to do so you can see the other one with oh. the embroidery <laughs> isn't there yet yeah. so you can see the difference yeah and uh, yes at the bottom on the hemline on the inside I um, I used duplicate stitch to embroider a heart here and I was supposed to have our initials here but they turned out so ugly so I had to um, uh, you ripped them out again. I ripped them out and I asked my darling daughter Ella can you please help me and she was like yes I will but <laughs> we haven't had time uh, but she's um, a master of the duplicate stitch so yeah. she will help me to uh, add our initials here I love that idea I Thank love you. that you choose to to create garments with for special events and with a certain meaning to them. Yes, thank I you. I've really thought of that. I love that too. Yeah. I, I often knit something for a special trip or an occasion. So the memories mm. kind of um, grows into the garment and then mm. I carry the memories uh, in my garments. But you are very much a romantic at heart. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I it's am. romantic. As you could tell yesterday when we watched one of my favorite movies, uh, yes. Dead Poet Society. She showed me the movie. It's the first time I've watched it, and I was bawling my yes. eyes out at the end. It's so uh, profound, yes. and beautiful, and so so um, in, such an important movie. I think mm. uh, about uh, the romantic poets mm. of that time, like um, yes, Uncle Walt, Walt Whitman, and Tennyson, and, and Robert uh, Frost. Yes, and uh, yeah, how important poetry can be in our lives. Yeah. So it's uh, it was a joy to watch it with you, even though we uh, our ears, uh, our eyes, uh, our eyes teared up. And yeah. um, yes, uh, so um, that's what we're wear wearing right now, and what I'm currently working on is uh, actually mostly crocheting for now. I've been knitting this cardigan during uh, the summer, uh, but I'm um, crocheting uh, a blanket. Uh, with these squares in different colors. And this uh, all started last spring when I, during uh, time of Lent, wanted to um, kind of with withdraw and contemplate uh, upon important things. And I wondered how am I gonna manifest the time of Lent mm. with my creativity and uh, reflections. And I thought uh, about um, making a blanket that I call the Lent blanket. So I actually started an, an additional Instagram account for my normal Thank Instagram you. account is Sophia's Tales. Mm. But I started a, an additional um, Instagram account that I called uh, Fastefilten, which is the Swedish word for the Lent blanket. Mm -hmm. So I made this blanket during Lent um, with all the beautiful different colors. Uh, and I... I prayed while uh, working on this blanket. So I thought my prayers were put into this blanket and uh, as some kind of manifestation of uh, uh, good thoughts and prayers for the world to make mm. it a better place. I, I felt like I could put my faith uh, in a better world uh, into something uh, creative and mm. uh, transform my anxiety and worries uh, into this lovely blanket instead. And I also felt like, I mean, I, I think I really believe that prayers help, but I thought, what can I do while working on this blanket? 
I was thinking, what can I do more uh, on a concrete level mm. to help uh, people in need? So I also started another blend blanket uh, with um, my leftover yarns, uh, sock yarns. And I asked uh, several of my friends, including my daughter and um, my uh, mother-in-law, if they would want to help me to uh, create a blanket that we could uh, auction off. Auction off. Yeah. And use the money that we get in from that auction uh, to for charity to help people mm. in need more on a concrete level. Yeah. Uh, so this Lent blanket project uh, became a big part of. Uh, my creativity this um, past spring and uh, I was so happy to share it with so many other women like my uh, mother-in-law my daughter uh, several friends and also new friends that I got to know that heard about this and asked can I help Mm. and so many women from different countries uh, some uh, that uh, only have been in Sweden for a, a little while and uh, some who have been living here for their whole life. We helped each other to uh, create all these squares and I started to put them together. Uh, but then uh, so many other things have happened like the plans mm. for the wedding and stuff. So it isn't finished yet, but I'm working on it. And now when you're going home, I think I'm going to start to um, assemble it into a large lovely blanket and I will show it on upcoming podcasts Uh, and um, when it's finished it's going to be an auction where I hope we can bring in a lot of money to help people on a more concrete level. So this prayers blanket was um, uh, created during Lent and uh, I loved uh, crocheting. I feel it's uh, a really joyous thing. except from the knitting that I love, uh, <laughs> but I also love to crochet sometimes. And it's like this kind of a rabbit hole. I, I just, one one more square and one more yeah. square. <laughs> it's like knitting in the round. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just one more round. <laughs> and it's a good uh, thing to do when you are um, talking to someone at the same time. You can be social and... Yeah. And, and, and you don't have to look down much. No, okay. exactly. Yeah. So uh, when my mother-in-law asked me uh, what she was going to... Uh, do next because she has been knitting and crocheting and sewing for her whole life she's 83 and uh, I'm so grateful for her she's a wonderful woman in my life Um, but she hasn't been doing much handicraft the last couple of years as uh, she didn't know where to put it all who would Mm. want to who would need it who would need it so she has been more into puzzles and uh, crosswords and stuff like that uh, and when she uh, got to know me, she uh, rediscovered her passion. She did. Yeah. And it was such a joy to uh, be able to kind of give that to her. And I mm. could, she could give me inspiration and show her old projects. Mm. And she could be proud of mm. what she has been working on yeah. earlier. Because she has done so many lovely things. And she really enjoyed making this Lent blanket for the auction together with me. Mm. And when she was finished with all those squares, uh, she asked me, uh, what am I going to do now? I don't want to quit uh, crocheting. I want to, to have another project. And at the same time, uh, she also asked me, what do you, um, what do you and my son uh, want as a wedding gift from me? And I said, the best wedding gift uh, is that we have you, so we don't need uh, more things. And she said, but I want to give you something. And I put these two questions together in my answer uh, as a question to her. And I asked her, maybe if you would like to, I would be really happy if you would want to continue knitting squares together with me for Mm. a blanket or bedspread for our bed as a wedding gift. So she was so happy and said yes immediately. And I was grateful that she wants to do this together with me because Mm. it's... uh, um, It's a very special gift. It is. That she gets to create something that you and her son will use every single day and appreciate exactly. every day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so um, we are making the same kind of squares that I have made in this blanket, but with a white border on each. So these are also different colors and uh, um, uh, all the squares, but uh, with a white border that keeps it together. Uh, very soft, mm-hmm. nice uh, colors and the yarn is Sandnes Duo which is a blend um, 
of uh, cotton and wool because I wanted a wooly yarn but I still I also wanted the cotton uh, feeling that it's uh, mm-hmm. kind of but not too heavy because it's going to be a large blanket yeah so I, I feel it's a good choice of yarn and she has made so many squares and I'm also working on my squares and um, finally it's going to become a, a, a great bedspread and uh, a nice gift for us that I appreciate very much so uh, yes that's what I'm working on currently except for uh, one other thing uh, that I will uh, tell you in a while yes okay. <laughs> you asked me a question the other day when we sat in yes. the car yes that's true we were having uh, lots of deep and um, beautiful conversations yesterday because um, we traveled around took some footage went swimming again and I uh, went for a hike and I asked you after you've I suppose you just call it a milestone after you've gotten married and you're sort of starting this new life together starting to get settled into a new routine what are the things that you're most looking forward to in the next year I thought that was such a lovely question yeah. to 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 receive. I think we uh, all of us need to sometimes uh, kind of pause in life and think, where am I and where am I going and am I content with mm. where I am or should I make any changes? And uh, what I'm looking forward to most right now is, as I said to you yesterday. Um, actually my everyday life uh, mm. because that is a precious thing to um, to be content with your everyday life and I am uh, but finding the balance between my work and my private life is uh, um, yeah that's something I'm working on and I think I'm, I'm getting there slowly because when I was on my own before I met Håkan I um, I worked all the time, <laughs> mm. and it's that's the problem when your when your passion is your work, uh, <laughs> as you also know. Yeah. And as you said, when you have free time, you and your mom sits and 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 you knit. Yeah. So that's also work, but yeah. it's, um, but I'm uh, slowly finding my ways to a great balance between these things because mm. I'm really looking forward to produce more podcasts again it's been a year since i um, released the last one and so much has happened in my life um, happy things and uh, i've also created lots of stuff i have also signed a book contract so That's the next so year <laughs> my first uh, knitting book uh, will be released next autumn mm-hmm. that's a that's a big task and uh uh, Do you have any interesting uh, spoilers or tidbits you can tell us about this book? Uh, I can tell that uh, the working title is uh, in Swedish because the book will be published in Swedish first. Mm-hmm. And we hope for a translation, but uh, everything isn't uh, uh, decided around that yet. So mm-hmm. it will first be in Swedish. And uh, the working title is, if I translate it into English, uh, it's Knitting a Warming Love Story. Oh, Stickning and Värmande Kärlekshistoria. And it's not me that uh, came up with that title. Okay. It's the publisher. So uh, I was so glad uh, because I I really felt that I loved the title. Yeah. And it's going to um, be uh, uh, many knitting patterns, of course, but also uh, texts and, um, yeah, reflective texts uh, about life and... Um, Life in general and uh, knitting in particular, perhaps, as I mm. uh, also call this podcast, what it's about. And uh, uh, some recipes and uh, many lovely inspiring pictures. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward to this. I have started to work on it, but uh, now I'm, I will have a new start uh, when, when you are going home mm. and this everyday life starts uh, here again. And so. you'll be working with Ella together as well for this yes. book. Ella, Ella will help me a lot behind the scenes. So yeah. we, we are planning uh, to make a, a trip up north to take some lovely autumn pictures in a couple of weeks. That's, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, my everyday life and um, a balance between uh, job and uh, private life and uh, getting back uh, on the podcast and creating new patterns. Well, I can't see, wait to see your future episodes. 
thank you <laughs> the same <laughs> it's lovely to to have spent so much time with you now after the wedding and i'm so glad mm. you stayed because then it didn't just all the uh, extra excitement, fun yeah. excitement didn't just end uh, after the wedding day we uh, had some lovely days with some friends staying and then you stayed a little longer than everyone mm. else and i'm yeah. so uh, glad for that and we had a day uh, in uh, Uppsala with Ella and yeah. yes what are your favorite memories from this uh, from week? this trip yes oh so many um i'll have to i'll have to boil it down to some essential ones i have to say the first favorite memory that i have is seeing you and Hawkan um walk down the aisle together um, you in your beautiful blue dress, and I think Hawkan was uh, wearing a matching vest, also in the blue. I thought yes. that was beautifully combined, and of course the gorgeous Thank shawl you. that Mum knitted you. And I wanted to ask you: Is it typical in Sweden for the couple to walk down the aisle together? Because from movies, I know that the uh, the bridegroom stands at the front and yeah. is all excited and waits for his bride to walk <laughs> down. But I thought that was so nice for you to walk down together. Thank you. Yes, I would say it's. Uh traditional to do so in Sweden yeah. but now in modern days it's um, of course it can be done in many different ways so sometimes yeah. uh, you also do as in the movies <laughs> in Sweden <laughs> but we wanted it to um, yeah manifest our walking together through life and we wanted to go in together so mm. that's uh, why we did that yeah and you also had a beautiful um, entry march it was a traditional Swedish or Norwegian yes, no. song a traditional Swedish yeah. wedding march called uh, Bröllopsmarsch från Delsbo. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. It was very happy that. and joyful. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. And apart from that, I um, did really enjoy sit- getting to sing at your reception um, with Eva accompanying me on the violin and Jenny on the piano. It was so nice uh, to be able to connect with friends of Sophia's who I'd never met before, but they were so good at following my lead I had the easy part I just sang and they had to sort of listen and and watch out that they <laughs> we, we, and we are fortunate to have such um, so many um, talented friends <laughs> that want to share their music with us yeah. like your singing was absolutely amazing uh, it was um, a precious gift thank and, you and also seeing you with our other friends uh, mm. the three of you had never met and my youngest son uh, kind of brought you together without my knowing, yeah. <laughs> so you could. So we could plan surprise. We could surprise you and yeah, We were both very, very happy for that. Yeah, and I have to say, Swedes in general seem to be incredibly creative. <laughs> there was a lot of singing at your wedding. Yes, it's beautiful. I'm so, and so grateful. Another thing I enjoyed was going swimming with you, Sarah, and Charlotte yes. in the ocean. I'm very passionate about swimming in the ocean. I don't get to do it very often. And it was so nice to have a kindred spirit who loves it just as much. A kindred spirit, yeah. indeed. Uh, I um, I love to share the things I love with lovely friends. So it was mm. a joy to see your joy while swimming. Yeah, but Sophia's hardcore. She'll go swimming <laughs> in winter when the rocks are covered in snow. I think occasionally you'll post a photo yes. of you alone <laughs> out in the and on the rocks in the ocean like a mermaid i love it I, yeah i just love it <laughs> yeah and it was also just wonderful to get to meet Hawkan and your kids and spend the day with you and ella and Uppsala. Uh, we went uh, to lots of bookshops actually as well and we visited the library university where they have the silver bible which is yeah. one of the oldest bibles um known or preserved yeah. to this day from it was, it the 6th uh, century. Was, yes, it was written yeah. in 500 something. Yeah, that's quite incredible. That was really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. And all the lovely bookshops uh, was uh, a joy to uh, share with you and Ella because we love books and yarn and mm. coffee so we yeah. went to several cafes and <laughs> had lots of fikas. Yes. So I I hope you have um both as well yarns and as memories to bring home uh, when you're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, we actually didn't talk about the yarn that I got. No. Um, maybe we can briefly mention this. Yes. There's two yarn shops that we went to, one near New Shopping. Yes, it's uh, called Friden's Yarn in the mm-hmm. countryside near to where I live. Yeah, in a very pretty location. And it was a Sunday evening after we'd gone swimming um, that you called your friend and said, I have some friends from all over the world. Can we please go visit your yarn shop? And she came around yes. within one minute and opened it up for us. That's where I bought this beautiful Rauma yarn for a friend of mine who likes to knit. 
and I thought she could combine these two colours to maybe make some pretty mittens. And then in Uppsala, uh, we went to another yarn shop. Yes, Ull och Tull, which is a favourite yarn shop. They also Ull have a web shop. Tull. What does that mean? Ull is wool and mm -hmm. Tull is, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, fabric that uh, ballet dancers have. Oh, yeah. um, yes, I don't know the number. No, I don't know that. the... Okay. Yeah, so it's... Um, Yeah. Lovely things. <laughs> yes. And I've got some more Rama yarn, uh, this time in this beautiful mossy green. And the idea is that I might need myself a cardigan like this one. Uh, but instead of having lace, I thought I could combine it with a pretty cream perhaps and see if I can find a, a pattern from some book with Celtic symbols that I could knit oh, with Intarsia or Feral. So maybe yeah. you will create your own pattern. Maybe. We'll yes. see. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. that's what that's I'm exciting. bringing back from Sweden. I hope I can somehow fit this all into my hand luggage because that's all I'm carrying with me. Yeah, you can squish it all in. Yes. <laughs> It's good that the yarn is uh, squishable. Yeah. But thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Thank you, Madeleine, and for being here this week and spending so much time with me and my family. Yeah. And uh, thank you for being on the podcast when I uh, come back now with new episodes. It's been a, a great pleasure and joy. And an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here with us. Bye. Bye. I vintras var jag en vecka i Tyskland hos Andrea och Madeleine som producerar Frutinitting podcast. Andrea och jag har länge varit vänner- och för något år sedan var hon hos mig en sommarvecka. Under tiden jag hälsade på i Tyskland jobbade vi med ett avsnitt av deras podcast. Du kan se våra samtal i avsnitt 129 av Fruity Knitting. En dag gick Andrea och jag på en pilgrimsvandring till Benediktinklostret i Bingen där Hildegard av Bingen kommer från. Det var en väldigt fin upplevelse. Vi åkte också på en utflykt till Heidelberg en dag, som är en sån där liten fin sagostad som jag älskar att vara i. När jag var i en väldigt svår period i livet sa en klok människa till mig att det är nu du verkligen kommer att märka vilka som är dina vänner. Och så var det. Det är fantastiskt att ha vänner som finns genom ljus och mörker, som du kan både skratta och gråta med, som är trygga och sanna. Vissa bor nära och andra långt bort. Sarah är en av de närmaste, men hon bor väldigt långt bort, ända borta i Maine, på andra sidan Atlanten. Jag är så innerligt glad att hon kom till vårt bröllop, precis som Andre och Madeleine gjorde. Och att hon kom en hel vecka i förväg så att vi hann göra massor av fina saker tillsammans. I hennes podcast, Fibertrack Podcast, avsnitt 132- kan du se ett av våra samtal. Jag jobbar på en liten film till mina patrons om våra dagar tillsammans. I nästa avsnitt av Sofias Tales podcast så kommer det förstås att bli massor av stickning men det kommer även att bli ett samtal mellan mig och Madeleine om några böcker som har inspirerat oss. Du har eh, tittat på min podcast här idag, Sofias Tales podcast på Youtube. Det är så roligt att vara igång igen och jag vill rikta ett extra varmt tack till dig som har stått ut med att vara Patreon hela den här tiden som eh, jag inte har släppt några avsnitt. Det har gett mig eh, mer än du kan ana. Eh, både uppmuntringsmässigt att sätta igång igen och eh, ekonomiskt. Och det ger mig hopp att, att nu komma igång på riktigt igen. Så extra stort tack till dig som väljer att vara Patreon på patreon.com-sofiastales. 
Eh, snart kommer ett nytt avsnitt och då ses vi igen. Och tills dess så kan du hitta mig på eh, Ravelry och på Instagram som Sofias Tales. Hej då! heartfelt thank you for watching. If you want to support my creative work, you are most welcome to become a patron at patreon.com slash Sofias Tales. Ett varmt och innerligt tack till dig som tittar. Om du vill stötta mitt kreativa arbete är du hjärtligt välkommen som patron på patreon.com snedstreck Sofias Tales. Ett stort tack till Yllo Tyll, den fantastiska garnbutiken i Uppsala som också finns som webbutik på yllotyll.com. Jag älskar att komma till Yllo Tyll. Det är som en godisbutik för oss som älskar garn. Här finns mängder av garn, inspiration och hjälpsam och kunnig personal. Kika in nästa gång du är i Uppsala eller gå in på yllotyll.com vet jag. Yeah.